Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the very first video of 2024. Happy New Year. It's kind of crazy because now that we're in 2024, this marks my 11th year on YouTube. Where does the time go? Like I, I can't even wrap my head around that. It's absolutely wild. So today for my first video of the year, of course I wanted to reflect on last year and talk about and round up all of my absolute favorite products from 2023. But because this is my 11th year on YouTube and I've been doing this type of video um, probably about 11 times now, <laughs> or 10 times I guess, I wanted to change it up a little bit and just add a little bit of spice to the typical best of the best yearly roundup video. So in the first part of this video, I'm going to be going through every beauty category that I laid out for all of my favorite products. So foundation, concealer, lips, eyes, et cetera, et cetera. I will give you guys all of my favorites from each of those categories. And when I'm done with each category, Category, I will then narrow it down to my top number one favorite from that category. So by the end of the video, I will have my number one favorites from each category that I will then compile into <laughs> a bracket tournament and I will put all of those top number one favorites head to head and I will narrow it down and funnel it down to the very best product of the year. I don't even know what that product is going to be at this point. We're really gonna find this all out together. I'm really excited to go through this process with you. It's gonna be a lot of fun. As always, let me know all of your thoughts in the comments and your thoughts on all the products I'm talking about. Some of your personal favorites, I wanna hear them. And also let me know what you wanna see from me in 2024. That would be awesome to hear from you guys. So. Let's just get right into it. Before I start, I'm gonna just give one disclaimer. It's not really a disclaimer, but I just wanted to point out how I decided what my favorites were of the year. Typically when I think of my favorites, I think of my most used products of the year, but I didn't feel like that was the metric that I wanted to use for this year. Instead, I wanted to really highlight the products that were my most loved of the year. So not really paying too much attention to how much I actually used it, but the products that really like left a little mark on my heart. Now that that's clear, let's start off first with foundation. So there are a couple foundations that really stole my heart this year. In fact, they were one, two, three, four. So if we were to talk about what my most used foundation was this year, it is without a doubt the Chanel Le Beige Touche de Taint Water Fresh Complexion Touch Foundation. And if you look at the bottle, you can see that I am almost done this foundation. It is so rare for me to finish a makeup product purely because I am constantly trying out so many things. Very few products that I very, very, very consistently use, so much so that I almost finish them. Trust me, I wish that I finished more products, but just because of the nature of my job, that's just not always the case. What makes this foundation such a huge favorite of mine over the last year is just the fact that it is such a unique texture. It does have a very watery texture. It's called a water fresh foundation, I guess, for that reason. Um, so it is really lightweight, but yet it still has a medium coverage. And I'm always surprised with how little product I actually need whenever I use this. I always pump out way more than I need um, because I'm like, there's no way that little tiny bit of product is gonna cover my whole entire face, but it always does. It always looks fresh. It lasts really well throughout the day. It works great for daytime, for nighttime. So it's just always a product that I'm going towards, so it's really fantastic. So next we've got the Glossier Stretch Fluid Foundation and the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. I kinda want to talk about these in the same breath because I feel like the reason why I like both of these is because they are kind of similar to one another and they do remind me of each other. What these two have in common is that they give such good coverage to the skin, but they don't make the skin look heavy, they don't make the skin look cakey, and both of these foundations keep the skin looking super fresh and dewy and natural. The House Labs one especially gives such a doll-like appearance to the skin, but even though it has like such nice coverage and it really like perfects the skin, a lot of those types of foundations typically look a little bit heavier. This just doesn't. I don't know how it does it, but it looks so fresh. And I think a big reason as to why both of these work in that way is because they are loaded with a lot of different types of skincare ingredients, which just keep the foundation looking less makeup-y and more skincare like. When I discovered the Glossier Foundation, I used it mostly for day-to-day -day use um, when I did want a little bit more coverage. And for the House Labs Foundation, this was my go-to event foundation. For every single event that I went to this year, this was the one that I wore on my face. The foundation that surprised me the most this year was definitely the Fenty Blur and Smooth Tint Stick. 
It's so funny because I feel like this really had a very low key entrance <laughs> into the, like the foundation world. I don't think a lot of people spoke about it, but I find that more recently I've heard so many people talk about this product and talk about how much they loved it. And this isn't necessarily my most used foundation of the year. I definitely use these three a lot more, but it's a foundation that really impressed me and that I really, really enjoyed whenever I did pick it up. So this is a stick foundation that is supposed to kind of be in the same vein as the Ease Drop liquid that Fenty has, which is what really intrigued me when I first saw this because I'm such a big fan of the eavesdrop liquid. I know I'm using a lot of the same words, by the way, but th there's obviously a reason why I like all of these products and it's because they have a lot of similar qualities. And this is another foundation that has really amazing coverage. Like this is a solid medium coverage, if not full coverage foundation, but it is so lightweight. It also has this really beautiful blurring quality to it, very similar to the liquid ease drop. And I do have dry skin in any product that has a little bit more of like a matte or even a blurring quality to it. It always makes me a little bit nervous because it will often just make my skin look extra dry, extra cakey. That was not the case with this. Again, similar to the ease drop, even though it does have that more like matte blurring finish to it, it still is very flattering for my dry skin. So now that we are finished with the category, what is my number one favorite foundation from this year? Between the Chanel, the Glossier, the Fenty, and the House Labs, I think my number one favorite, ooh, it's kind of harder than I thought. I'm gonna go with the Chanel. The Chanel is definitely my favorite foundation of the year, the number one. I mean, as you can see, like I said, it's my most used, but not only is my most used, it's just the foundation that I find I can always depend on. It always makes my skin look really nice, really hydrated. It gives me the coverage that I need, even when my skin is not behaving, it works well with it. So this is gonna be the number one winner. So I actually only had three favorite concealers of the year. Um, I really did narrow down my favorites quite a bit. Normally when I do these yearly favorites, I have like, so many products to talk about, but I really try to keep things very, very, very tight in each category, keeping things competitive, you know? I don't want these these products to feel too comfortable in my life. So the Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer has been a favorite concealer of mine for years at this point. So it's pretty impressive that it still continues to be at the very, very, very top, considering this is not a new product at all. This continues to be my favorite medium to full coverage concealer. When I'm doing full glam, when I want my under eyes to look flawless, there's no other concealer that I will reach for other than this guy. It has a thicker liquidy texture. It's not thin and serum-like. And because it's not like a super thin serum-y consistency, it just doesn't really move. It doesn't settle. It just kind of envelops the under eyes and makes your under eyes look perfect. For my true everyday concealers, these two are them. Tower 28 Serum Concealer and the Say Hydra Beam. These are both very, very hydrated concealers. They're dewy without being slippery. I actually find that I don't necessarily have to set either of these with powder and they will last beautifully throughout the entire day. They will not crease. The Tower 28 Serum Concealer really has become that girl for me for, for the last like couple months of the year, basically since this was released. It's been practically the only concealer that I've been wearing. Like it's hard for me to even think outside of it because it's been such a staple and just right at the forefront of my concealer collection for a couple months now. Um, it's just so good. Like it, to me, this is one of the most perfect products that have been launched this year. It just hits every box. So I think this one is easy. Um, my number one favorite of my favorites for the concealer category, it's the Tower 20 Serum Concealer, without a doubt. So now moving into the bronzer category, we've got four favorites. I mean, let's let's start off with the obvious one, Makeup by Mario <laughs> Skin Enhancer. So I would say the Chanel Le Beige Foundation and the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer are two of my most used products of the year, as you can see. I have majorly hit pan on this guy. I mean, you guys know this already. I've spoken about it time and time again, but if you, for some reason, have not heard me talk about this product yet, let me break it down for you. When you apply this to your skin, it has pigment to it, so it gives you that beautiful bronzy look, but even though it has that pigment, it also has translucency at the same time. So when you apply it to your skin, you get that bronzy, gorgeous look, but it really, truly looks like it's so natural and a part of your skin because you do actually see your skin and your skin texture underneath. So it just gives you the most natural looking bronze look ever. It's also such an easy product to use and incorporate into your routine, no matter kind of like what you're doing to your face on that particular day, you can use it without any foundation underneath. You can use it on top of your foundation. It's great for daytime, it's great for nighttime, it's great to use as a base layer before you apply maybe even more intense 
bronzer. Um, you can use it on its own and apply like a pretty generous layer all over the face and it's going to just make you look tanned and glowy. Like there's a reason why I've hit pen on this. It's because I will use this every single day, no matter what the occasion, no matter what I'm going for, no matter what I have going on on my face. This is somehow making it onto my cheeks. The Tower 28 Sculptino Bronzer is actually not that far off from the Make by Mario Skin Enhancer. They're not exact in formula at all, but they are kind of in the same realm. This has a little bit more pigment and not as much translucency. And there's definitely more emollients to the Tower 28 Sculptino. So it's a bit of like a wetter formula, but in the way that they kind of like look on the skin, they are very similar, which is again, why I use it so much because obviously I really love this. So it makes sense that I really love this as well. So all year long, I kind of just went between these two guys and sometimes I even use them together. But when I wanted a little bit more intensity, I would go towards this guy. The Drug Elven D Bronzy Anti-Pollution Sunshine Drops definitely became a huge staple for me this year. So these are bronzer drops and you can use them either on their own or mix in with your foundation or your moisturizer, really whatever you want. For the longest time, I pretty much never used this on its own. I pretty much only would mix this in with my foundation and that is still like one of my favorite ways to use this product because it just will add a little bit of bronze and a little bit of a glow. But recently I started to actually use it on its own as like a liquid bronzer and especially on my no makeup makeup days when I didn't really want like a makeup-y bronzer on my face, but I still wanted to add a little bit of color. I found that this was the perfect product to use because when you use like just a really tiny amount, you really buff it into the skin, it just adds like the lightest hint of color. I love a versatile product that can be used in so many different ways. I just feel like you get a lot more bang for your buck. Last but not least, the House Labs Powder Bronzer. I don't know where she is. I literally dug through my entire collection three times and I cannot find it anywhere, which is very frustrating. I don't know where it went, but this is definitely my favorite powder bronzer of the year. This is such a creamy powder bronzer. When you touch it, you'll know exactly what I mean right away. It doesn't even feel like a powder. It feels like a silky velvety cream. And because it's such a creamy texture, when it's applied to the skin, it applies in a very like smooth, even way. Um, I, I find that it's pretty much impossible to over apply it. It also has a little bit of a glow to it, which is so pretty. It's not like sparkly or super glowy, but it just has like a nice skin, skin like glow. So it's not flat on the skin at all. And it has like this really nice, almost cream bronzer like finish. So my number one favorite bronzer, I told myself I wouldn't say the Makeup by Mario skin enhancer, but who am I kidding? <laughs> Why wouldn't I say the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer? Of course, this is my favorite. I wonder if it's gonna be my favorite bronzer next year. Like, will something outshine this? For blush, let's actually talk first about the Say blush because this is actually the newest blush in my life. But even though I only got this, I think like a month and a half ago, it very quickly became like one of my favorite blushes that I tried this year. And I feel like it even says more that I'm including this in my yearly favorites because this product really only had a month and a half to make it to this list, whereas so many other products had a full year and this still landed <laughs> in my top favorite blushes. So I feel like that says actually a lot. So this is the Say Do blush in the shade Chili, and Julie Adams spoke about this blush for such a long time, and I always had it on my list of blushes to try, but for some reason, either like they were, it was sold out, or I just would forget to pick it up, but I think it was the last Sephora sale, I finally picked it up, and oh man, am I happy that I did. So this is like a cool toned, mauve blush, and normally I wouldn't really go towards this type of blush shade. And she always said that this was the best blush to mimic the way your cheeks look when you get a little bit cold. And I think that's why they called it chilly. I mean, it only makes sense. This really does do the most beautiful job at just making your cheeks look so, I'm saying it again, naturally flush. How many times did I say natural in this video so far? It's a liquid blush technically, but it's very cream-like and kind of thick. So you would think like when you first apply this that it would be kind of like a difficult, blush to work with because it is so thick and, you, and you'd almost think that it would be like ultra pigmented, very similar to like the Rare Beauty blushes, but it's not at all. Um, you can apply even a, a large amount like that, but it will always just blend so nicely in the skin and so seamlessly. And it's just so easy to sheer down. My favorite powder blushes, just even in general this year, without a doubt are the Dior Rosy Glow 
blushes. These have also been so hyped up, um, but they really are, in my opinion, worth the hype. I've tried almost all the shades in this collection and they're all matte, so they don't have any shine or shimmer to them, which I love, but even though they're matte and they don't have shine or shimmer, they still have a little bit of a sheen to them and they give the skin a nice glow. The shade Cherry is my favorite. It's definitely my most used. This has been living in my everyday vanity for a while now and I'm actually wearing it on my cheeks today. And it looks so bright and intense in the pan and it does actually translate to be pretty bright on the cheeks, but I still find it to be very wearable and easy to work with. Let me show you, I'm, I'm already wearing it, but just pop a little bit more on. And they also just last so nicely throughout the day, like this vibrant, color does not go anywhere. The Rare Beauty Liquid Lushes, I feel like always land somewhere in my favorites. This is the shade Hope, and this was definitely my most used shade from the line from this entire year. I don't typically go towards pink blushes, just naturally, but this pink blush, oh, so pretty. It's actually a really pretty warm pink, so it has a little bit of peach to it as well. And the Rare Beauty blushes are known to be a little bit not difficult to work with, but you have to be a little bit careful when you apply them. But this color I find is so easy to apply. You don't need to be like overly careful when using it. My favorite bronzy blush of the year, definitely Nude Sticks Sun Kissed. This I actually think is considered to be a bronzer in their lineup. Maybe I'm mistaken, but either way I use it as a blush. And you can see like when I swatch it, it actually looks like a bronzer, but it also has some rosiness to it, which is what makes it work so nicely as a blush. And whenever I have um, like a look where I don't really want to worry about my cheeks, like I don't wanna worry that my cheeks are gonna clash with my eyes or my outfit or whatever else I have going on in my face, I love using a color like this because it will still add warmth, but it's not going to compete with anything else going on. Um, the Nude Six formula is a formula that I've loved for years now, so it's always a go-to, and that's all I really gotta say about it. What is the number one favorite blush of the year, though? That is the question. Am I gonna say the Say Cream Blush and Chili? Is that wild? It's so new in my life, but yet it's really risen straight to the top. By the way, you may notice that I don't have a primer or a uh, powder category. And <laughs> that's because I just didn't have any that I felt like were worth talking about. And I know you're probably thinking, wait, Jamie, wait, 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 Kosas Cloud Set. You talk about that all the time and I do. But at the same time, I actually feel like I use Kosas Cloud Set way less than I used Kosas Cloud Set previous years. Not because I don't like it any less, but simply because I feel like I'm not really using powder as much. But I definitely wanna talk about some lip products because I have quite a few. Might as well talk about what I just applied to my lips, the Milk Odyssey Lip Oils. So many lip oils have been launched this year. The Odyssey Lip Oil from Milk Makeup really stood out to me because I actually feel like this feels like a lip oil. A lot of lip oils that were launched this year kind of were just glosses. <laughs> they, they were just glosses that weren't sticky. They have a true lip oil feel to them. They also feel super hydrating and the colors that they come in Gorgeous. And they make your lips look exceptionally juicy, especially a color like this. This is the shade Trek. It, it has a little bit of a shimmer in it as well, which is very, very nice. Although the shimmer isn't like, bam, very intense. It kind of just adds a little bit of extra glossiness in my opinion. And this color is stunning. It's almost like a your lips but better type of shade. So beautiful. And this color is another color that I wouldn't typically go towards, but I've been wearing it a lot. It's like a very light baby pink and it's in the shade Soul Search. And this layered with like a darker nude lip liner. It's such a beautiful like pouty light nude lip look. It's very, very pretty. Lip Butter Bombs, another very popular product category from the year. Very happy that it was because it's also one of my favorite types of lip products to wear. Summer Friday's Lip Butter Bombs were definitely one of my favorites as well as the Nude Sticks Hydro Peptide Lip Butters. I have multiple shades in both of these formulas. They both kind of do very similar things. Because it's a bomb texture, it's very easy to just throw on. You don't have to think about it, you don't have to worry about it. And you're gonna be left with a really nice wash of color on the lips, a lot of shine, and hydration, because they are hydrating lip balms, which is great. The for a day today lip, I feel like this type of formula is really ideal. They also smell so good, especially the Summer Fridays ones. Lip gloss sticks, also very popular. You either love these or you hated these. This one in particular is from MAC, and this one was my favorite. It is the Squirt Plumping Gloss Stick in the shade Simulation. Simulation is a really beautiful, cool toned, nudie brown. 
so glossy, so intense. The thing with the gloss sticks is you need to be very careful when applying them because they're very melty and very soft. So when you do apply this, you need to do maybe one or like two turns just so there's a tiny bit of product right at the top. And you also don't wanna to press too hard when you go in to apply it. Sounds a little bit finicky and annoying and it is, but the end result is a glossy, glossy, gorgeous, beautiful, stunning lip, so. Worth it in my opinion. Now for a lip product that I didn't necessarily wear that much this year, but really did steal my heart, the Pat McGrath Ellison 4 Liquid Lip. This, if you did not know, is the lip that Taylor Swift wears on the Eras Tour, which is precisely the reason why I purchased it. Um, it is a liquid lipstick from Pat McGrath, and it is the most beautiful, cool toned, true red. I bought this, I think at the end of October or early November. So it really hasn't been in my life for very long, but I've worn it probably about 10 times. So it is a liquid lipstick, so it is completely matte. It's not overly drying though, so it doesn't feel horrible on the lips. I mean, just look at that color. It is so stunning and intense and beautiful. I think this is the first year that I'm not including a Makeup Forever lip liner as one of my favorite lip liners. And I actually was going to, but, I decided to just keep it to one lip liner because there was another lip liner that I would actively seek out every single time I would do almost any type of lip other than like a red. And that was the Rare Beauty lip liner in the shade Wise. I always went towards this color because I felt like it just always gave the best contoured look to my lips. It gave great shape. It was so easy to make my lips look really plump and juicy with it. What I like about Wise is that it has that coolness to it but it also has a little bit of warmth. Um, sometimes a lip liner that can be too cool will just look gray on the lips and it'll look a little bit off and weird. I always found that this just looked perfect. What is the number one favorite this year? The Rare Beauty Lip Liner. It's actually very fair to say that the Rare Beauty Lip Liner is my absolute favorite because I would use this with, for all of these lipsticks, all these lip products besides the red lipstick. Okay, now let's move on to eye products. And it's safe to say that for me, this was the year of brown. <laughs> brown mascara, brown eyeliner. I used brown more than ever before on my eyes. A brown mascara and a brown liquid eyeliner is the perfect alternative to a black mascara or black liquid eyeliner because it's just softer. So we've got three brown mascaras. We've got the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara in the shade brown, the Tower 28 mascara in the shade drift, and then this is the Clarins Mascara Supra Volume in the shade intense brown. They're all very similar as far as the color goes. They're all like a very similar type of brown. The Make Waves mascara just in general, the black or the brown, either or, probably my favorite mascara I've ever tried. It does everything for me. It lifts the lashes, it lengthens the lashes, it adds volume, it does not smudge on me whatsoever. It's To me, it is just the perfect mascara and it is definitely the mascara that I fell the hardest for. All I wanted was for them to come out with the brown mascara and when they released one, all of my dreams really did come true because it's the perfect brown mascara. It has all the qualities of the original black in that it does all of those things that I just mentioned, but it's just a beautiful dark brown mascara. With a brown mascara, you don't necessarily have to compromise on drama or on intensity. You can still get an intense lash look with a brown mascara. And I feel like this gives the most intense look out of the three. And I find that the Too Faced and the Clarence mascara actually give a very similar effect to one another. They both give more of like a fluffy, lengthy look. For eyeliner, the Fenty Fly Liner in the shade In Big Truffle is my favorite brown eyeliner that I've tried this year. And the color of this eyeliner is such a beautiful, like chocolatey brown. It's not so deep where it, you lose the brownness of it. <laughs> I'm actually wearing it on my eyes today so you can see what the color looks like. So you can see it's a perfect chocolatey brown color. This year was not the year of eyeshadow for me. I really did not take out an eyeshadow palette and do like a full on eyeshadow look almost at all this year. I think I did it maybe like five times, which is kind of crazy. The only palette that I really took out this year was this little mini palette from Rowan called Mood Forever. I can't find it. <laughs> Another product I cannot find. I will insert swatches though, so you guys can see what it looks like. I spoke about this palette quite a bit this year. Um, it's just one of my favorites when I want just a little something on my lids, a little bit of shine, a little bit of gloss. It's kind of like a hybrid between a cream and a powder. I just go with my finger, smear it in the eyeshadow, smear it on my lid, and then I'm left with like a really pretty glossy, shimmery lid. It's great for day to day, great for nighttime when you want a little bit of sparkle. This one's also quite easy. My number one favorite eye product of the year 
the best of the best in this category. Tower 20 Make Waves in Drift. All right, that's everything for the makeup categories. Now let's move into body care, skin care, and hair care. For body care, this was definitely the year of Lusty 10 for me, for sure, because um, as you can see, three out of the four products here are from Lusty 10. I said this before about Lusty 10 products, but these have always been my mom's favorites. And when I was a teenager, I would always go into my mom's bathroom and steal her Lusty 10 products. So I think now as an adult, I'm just really living my best life and using as many Lusty 10 products as possible. So let's just go down the list. First, we've got the shower oil. And this is such a luxurious product, you guys. If you wanna feel like you're really treating yourself when you're showering, Getting a shower oil is definitely the way to do it. It smells so good and so delicious. And because it's an oil, it's obviously super gentle and hydrating and softening on the skin. And I just adore using it. I didn't want to bring the giant jar of my milk concentrate. So I instead I brought this little mini sample just to have a little placeholder here for you guys. But the almond milk concentrate is definitely my favorite body cream from Lusty 10. It's a little bit more lightweight than a lot of their other ones. So it absorbs into the skin very quickly, but it's still very deeply hydrating. And again, the scent is amazing. Like I said, the entire almond collection is my favorite. It's lightly like sweet and gourmand, but not too sweet at all. The last Lusty 10 product that is my favorite from this year is another one from the almond collection. And this is the hand cream. This one I keep next to my bed in my little night table and I apply it every single night before going to sleep. Lusty 10 is really known for their hand creams and just like all their other products, there's a lot of different lines and levels of moisture. Again, this one is my favorite because it's, it's super moisturizing without being too thick. Their shea butter hand creams, which are also very popular, are super, 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 super hydrating, but they're super thick as well, um, which sometimes I don't like right before going to bed. So that's why I really enjoy this one. And then the last body care product that I've really gotten back into this year is Lush Sympathy for the Skin. This is such a nostalgic throwback for me because I used to use this product all the time, like when I was a teenager. And over the years, I'd gone through tubs and tubs and tubs of it, but I haven't really, use Lush products in a, in a long time. And not that long ago, I went into a Lush store for the first time in ages and I was browsing through all of their products and I saw Sympathy for the Skin and it completely jolted my memory because I feel like I completely forgot about this product and it was such a huge staple of mine for such a long time. I feel like it actually has a very similar feel to the La Ten Milk Concentrate Body Moisturizer. Um, it even has a similar scent. And so I would say that the number one favorite product from the year in the body care category would be the La Ten Milk Concentrate Body Cream. All right, now moving into skincare, I did separate the skincare into two different categories, just general skincare and then also SPF. So in 2023, I definitely refined my skincare routine because I was experiencing some skin issues over the last half of the year. Um, I have perioral dermatitis. It's been difficult trying to like manage it and figure out what products are making it worse, what products are making it better, and just trying to really figure out like a solid skincare routine that my skin is not hating. These are all the products that have really worked so well for me over the entire year. One of my most used products this year is definitely the Then I Met You Living Cleansing Balm. I think I've gone through like four or five tubs of these over the year, and this has definitely become one of my favorite oil-based cleansers. It does a wonderful job of breaking down every stitch of makeup. It doesn't leave an oily residue and it just comes off nice and clean. For moisturizers, these have been my three favorites. One of my absolute favorite discoveries this year is Stradia as a brand. Um, I've tried now, I think four products from the brand and every single product that I try, I really just fall in love with. And the liquid gold moisturizer is like the star product for me from the brand. It has such great super hydrating ingredients that will really nourish the skin, but it's very, very, very lightweight. And my skin just really, really enjoys this product. So this was probably one of my favorite discoveries of the year. The Grown Alchemist Hydro Repair Day Cream is another moisturizer that my skin really enjoyed this year. I especially really like this moisturizer for when I applied my makeup, like right before applying it almost as a primer. Super lightweight, definitely prefer this more so for like the summertime, um, in the winter time, and when I need a little bit more hydration. I need something more like this or like the other product I'm about to show you guys. But in the summertime, this was my go-to. La Roche-Posay Cicaplast Balm B5 is a product that now I don't think I could ever live without. When my dermatitis was at its worst and it was so inflamed and so dry and 
basically anything that I put on my skin would make it worse. This was the only product that actually helped because it's super nourishing and there's not a lot in here that's going to irritate the skin. I've been using just this as my moisturizer over the last four weeks or so because my dermatitis like kind of flared up a little bit and got pretty bad over the last couple of weeks. And this really helped me bring it back down. It's definitely a very thick product. So it's not something that I would necessarily recommend using all the time, but for this particular use, like for my dermatitis, it was a lifesaver. Like I'm so grateful for this product. Now, when it came to my skincare routine, I never put that much importance on my cleanser. I just never felt like it made such a huge difference in my, my skin, like whether I use a gel-based cleanser or a cream cleanser, I always just felt like a cleanser was a cleanser and it's just meant to clean my skin. And as long as it doesn't strip my skin completely, then it's fine. I realized that that's not necessarily true, especially again, when dealing with this perioral dermatitis, I really had to use super, 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 super gentle products. And this Vivier Gentle Cleanser, it's called the Hexam Gentle Cleanser, was incredible for my skin. And I noticed such a huge difference when I started using this. I noticed that my skin was so much less irritated and red and inflamed after washing my face. This is called a gentle cleanser because it's it's gentle. And that's what I really love about this. That's all I really got to say about it. Um, I just really had to mention it. Ven is another skincare brand that I'm really grateful that I discovered in 2023 because it also made such a huge difference in my skin. Um, there are two products that I tried from Ven, the Symbiotic Defense Mist, as well as the Probiotic Sika Complex Biome Booster. And it's a product that I don't have here with me, but I need to go pick up another one. When I started to experience the dermatitis, um, I started to use this product and I found that it helped my skin so much. And then when I finished the product, my skin was actually much better. And so I thought that I didn't necessarily need to go out and buy another one because it kind of did its its job. So I haven't been using it over the last couple of months. And like I said, my skin definitely flared up quite a bit. And I feel like this is a product that I really miss in my routine because like I said, it really helped me when I first started to experience the dermatitis around my mouth. If you want a serum that's really gonna nourish your skin barrier, that is what this is really great for. The Symbiotic Defense Mist is another really great product from the brand. It's an essence mist, and, when, and whenever I do spray this on my face, I actually notice an immediate difference in the irritation level of my skin. If my skin is looking really red, it immediately calms it down. And that is it for all of my skincare favorites of the year. And now I gotta, narrow down my absolute favorite from the year. You know what? I think it's gonna be Liquid Gold from Stratia. This was such a good discovery this year and I feel like it, it really deserves the best of the best. Now moving into SPFs, there were three SPFs that really stood out to me this year. If you're looking for a tinted sunscreen, oh my God, the Elastin Pro Mineral Sunscreen is incredible. For almost the entire summer, I used this product as my foundation because it made my skin look flawless. And it's so weird because this product doesn't have coverage to it, but it does have a tint in, or, in order to mask the um, the white cast that you get with mineral sunscreen. But somehow this always made my skin look like I was wearing foundation. And it made my skin not only look like I was wearing foundation, but the nicest foundation. <laughs> it's also super hydrating. So it gave the most gorgeous glow to the skin as well. Huge, huge fan of this. Another tinted sunscreen that really blew me away this year is the Ajana Nater Holly Sun. The elastin texture is very creamy and, and slightly on the thicker side, whereas the Holly Sun is very serum-like. If you have very, very, very dry skin and you want a, a sunscreen that's gonna give you a lot of glow, you would be obsessed with this. And it does come in several different shades. I use the shade Almond. The tint is very sheer. So even though when like I look at the tint in the bottle, it doesn't look like it will it would match me at all. It almost looks a little bit orange. Once you actually blend it out onto the skin, it kind of shears out a little bit. And the color, if anything, just adds a little bit of like a bronzier glow to the skin, which is kind of nice. My untinted favorite is the Solara Guardian Angel Super Peptide Sunscreen Milk. So this is another serum -y SPF. What I really like about this SPF, along with these two as well actually, is that they do have some really nice skincare benefits in, in it as well. This has peptides in it. So it is nice to know that when you are applying your SPF that you are getting some other skincare benefits along with it. I really like the texture of this one. It, it does feel very lightweight. It layers really nicely underneath makeup or just on its own, of course. But if you have oily skin and you still want like a serum -y texture, this is great and it's not going to add too much sheen or too much glow. They're all great, but I think my number one favorite and the best of the best is definitely the Elastin Skin Care. All right, we are almost done. We're going into hair care now. Let's first talk curly products because as you guys know, I am trying to embrace my natural texture as much as possible, which means trying a lot of curly products. And um, I've tried a lot and there are a couple that have stood 
out on top for me. The JVN Air Dry Cream is definitely one that has really stood out for me this year. What I like a lot about the Air Dry Cream is that it's a one and done product. I can go in with just this. Granted, I do have to use quite a bit of it, but this on its own gives me the definition, the hydration, and the holds that I really like for my curls. It's really, really nice to find those products that will kind of do it all because sometimes when I'm, when I'm going between blow drying my hair or working with my curls, blow dry my hair just always feels like the easier option, believe it or not, because there's just so much that goes into making sure your curls look good. Um, and there's just so much involved. So it's nice to find those products that just kind of do it all and the air dry cream does it all for me. So the Verb Curl Foaming Gel, I don't have here with me to show you guys because it's quite big and I honestly didn't want to lug it over to my office, but this is another really awesome product. And what I really like about this is how unique it is. It's a hybrid between like a mousse and a gel. So when you pump it out, it looks very foamy, but it doesn't inflate as much as a mousse. And it's more lightweight compared to uh, a typical gel. So it gives really, really great definition and really great hold. Um, it doesn't really give much hydration. So when I use this product, I do like to use a cream alongside it. The Orbe Super Shine Moisturizing Cream has been one of my go-to hair products for over a year now. I'm actually almost finished this bottle over here. It works so well in just adding shine and moisture to my hair. I'll either apply it in my hair before blow drying it or I'll use it even in my curl routine or even when my hair is dry and I wanna add a little bit of shine and moisture to my hair and it gives me the results that I need. The best of the best in the hair category. You know what? I think the Orbe Super Shine Cream because this really just works in all situations. We've made it to the last category. Let's talk perfumes. Um, these are the three of my most loved perfumes of the year. Not necessarily my most worn, but my most loved. The reason why I say that is because the middle perfume here, the Diptyque Rose, is a newer perfume in my life, but I really fell in love with it over the last like two months that I've had it. So first things first, we have Baccarat Rouge 540. I've said this a million times. Um, I hate that I love this so much because it is so damn expensive, but this is by far one of my favorite perfumes I think I've ever, 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 ever tried. A little bit sweet, it's sexy, it's musky, it's everything that I wanted to perfume. I don't know. Um, the only problem really is the price. I actually just ordered a couple dupes of this perfume that I plan on testing out because I'm almost out and I would like to try out the dupes before investing in the bottle. <laughs> but this really was my most worn perfume of the year without a doubt. The Diptyque Eau de Rose, also a perfume that I would have never expected that I would like because it's so floral heavy. Um, it's literally called Eau de Rose because the main note in it is rose. But even though it is so floral heavy, it doesn't feel powdery or too weighed down. And this type of rose scent feels very fresh and sexy and feminine. Vanilla Musk from Nemat is another one of my go-tos that I've had in my collection for probably about 10 years. This is a perfume that I mix with almost all of my perfumes. It is a pure vanilla scent. It doesn't smell like fake or too sweet. It's just the perfect vanilla. This is something that I will wear on its own, but more often than not, I'll just mix it with my other perfumes to transform them. It just adds a little bit of sweetness to whatever I mix it in with. If you have this in your collection, like you will double your perfume collection because you can probably pair it with like all of your other perfumes. If you if you do like that sweetness at least. So the best of the best in this category, I hate to say it, but Baccarat Rouge 540. Cue the dramatic music because it's time for the tournament. So I don't even know which is going to end up at the very top. So we need to find out what the best of the best of the best product is. Um, let's recap what the best of the best products are currently. We've got the Chanel Le Beige Foundation, the Tower 28 Serum Concealer, Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer, the Say Blush in Chili, the Rare Beauty Lip Liner in Wise, the Tower 28 Mascara, the Lusitan Milk Concentrate, the Stratia Lipid Gold Moisturizer, the Elastin SPF, Orbe Cream. And I unfortunately did not have another <laughs> category, so things are a little bit uneven. So the background rouge, already won its bracket, which is fine. It's already moved on. Let's start off first with the Chanel foundation versus the Tower 28 concealer. Between these two, oh wow, this is actually really hard. <laughs> I, I was gonna go in really confidently, but now I completely take it all back. You know what, I think the Tower 28 concealer wins. The reason being, even though I love the Chanel foundation, I obviously use so much of it over the year, the Tower 28 concealer really really, really impressed me. Like it became such a huge favorite of mine immediately. And like I said, ever since it came into my life, I don't think I've used another concealer. Okay, moving on. We've got Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer versus the Say Blush in Chili. I feel like the obvious answer is for me to go for the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer, but 
I think I'm actually gonna go for the Say Blush and Chili for kind of similar reasons to why I chose a Tower 28 one. Be even though this is so much newer in my life and the Makeup by Mario um, bronzer really is like a huge favorite and it even won my bronzer tour tournament earlier this year. I really fell very hard for the Say Blush. I find that whenever I wear this blush, I actually get so many compliments on the blush that I'm wearing like out in public, which almost never happens to me. It's so interesting. And whenever I wear it, like I myself, like I'm always like, oh, my blush is looking really nice today. And I just don't often get that feeling when it comes to my blush. Like there's just something about it that is really special that I really like. Uh, the Rare Beauty Lip Liner in Wise versus the Tower 28 Mascara. I keep being like, oh, of course it's this. And then the other part of my brain is like, no, of course it's that. I think between the two, I'm actually gonna give it to the Rare Beauty Lip Liner in Wise because I literally use this with almost every single lip product that I put on my lips. This is a bit of a weird matchup, but we're just gonna go with it. Uh, we have the Lussie 10 Milk Concentrate Body Milk versus the Stradia Lipid Gold Moisturizer. And I think this one's pretty easy for me. I'm gonna give it to the Stradia Lipid Gold. While the moisturizer, the body moisturizer, does a w really wonderful job at moisturizing my skin, the Lipid Gold makes like physical differences in my face skin. Okay, then we've got the SPF from Elastin versus the Orbe Hair Cream. A bit of an unfair matchup, I will say that. You know what I actually think a fairer matchup would be? If the SPF just wins and then the Baccarat Rouge 540 goes against the hair cream. I feel like that's slightly makes a little bit more sense. Baccarat Rouge versus the hair cream, Baccarat Rouge wins. If I can't find a dupe, I don't know if I could live without the scent, you know? Okay, next round, round two. We've got the Tower 28 Serum Concealer versus the Say Dew Blush and Chili. It's gonna be the Tower 28 Concealer, yeah. If you came to me and you were like, you can only have one of these products in your vanity, which one would you choose? And then my gut reaction is to go with the Tower 28 Concealer. Now we have the Stradia Lipid Gold versus the Rare Beauty Lip Liner. This one's kind of easy for me. I'm gonna go with the Stradia Lipid Gold. It changed my skin. Like it made my skin better. So of course it's gonna win. Then we have Baccarat Rouge versus the SPF. I'm gonna have to say Baccarat Rouge. Oh wait, I think I messed up <laughs> my bracket. So now I have an uneven amount that are going against each other, which makes no sense. This is my bracket, my rule. So we're just gonna go with it. Um, I'm just gonna eliminate one of these three, which will bring it down to two. And I think the, the product that I'm gonna eliminate here between the Tower 20 Concealer, the Lipid Gold Moisturizer and Baccarat Rouge, it's gonna be the concealer because like I said, I can't really live without the scent and this Lipid Gold Moisturizer really did my skin so good. Oh shit guys, we are at the last and final round and I gotta say, I think the Lipid Gold wins. I think the Lipid Gold wins. And that was actually an easy, easy decision for me because I could find a dupe for that Baccarat Rouge perfume, potentially. I'll let you guys know. But I don't think I could find a dupe for that moisturizer. I've tried a lot of moisturizers in my day and this one was really special. So Lipid Gold from Stradia is my best product of 2023. I did not think that it would come down to this. Kind of cool that it did. All right, guys, that is it. Those are all of my favorite products from 2023. I really hope that you enjoyed. Again, don't forget to let me know all of your thoughts and everything that I spoke about today. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.